Welcome to another episode of Million Dollar Stories, where we get to interview authors from all over the world. I love meeting new entrepreneurs, and uh, they all have something to teach you. They all have something to teach me. And uh, this one, I think, is going to be perfect for you guys out there, because it really is about getting you uh, on more shows. And the book that's going to be talked about is called Guest Speaker Success. You know, a lot of people talk about how to set up a show or how to put together a podcast, which we have many clients that have done. But I have not seen an individual write a book or be a part of a book in regards to being a guest speaker. So it is an honor to have you here, sir, Johan Nogueira. Am I saying that correctly, Nogueira? You nailed it, my friend. Beautiful. Wow. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Well, it's an honor to have you here, sir. Thanks, man. Great to be here. Well, uh, tell us a little bit about the genesis of, I know you're a part of this book, Uh you were asked to be a part of it. I guess you have some type of experience in uh, in this world. And so maybe if you can kind of yeah, give us the yeah. genesis of how you were invited even to be a part of this book. Yeah, for sure. So invited to be part of this book, I'm part of uh, SAN, the Speakers Alchemy Network, run by Karen and Ken Corbin. They have been in this industry for, I think, 25 years. They used to run seminars over here in, in Australia with five, 10,000 people like Anyway, the big giant events, Tony Robbins uh, level events, you know that sort of thing. Wow! And so, th when the when the pandemic happened, they put together all the speakers and said, "Hey guys, we're creating this new uh, company, which is called San." And so we all the all the best ones were obviously invited into their group, which we were. And then we've just become the best of friends since then. And everybody shares, you know, how they grow and scale their companies through there. And then they had the idea of, hey, why don't we get everybody's expertise into this book? And so the 10 co-authors in there are just absolute champions in the industries. They're brilliant at what they do. And so people who put their hands up, they were vetted, they, they were in the book. And it's all to do with how to basically, how to de deliver so much value that people just go, hey, I need you on my show. Or, hey, I need you on my show. And since the release of the book, Man, we have been hit up like every day. People are taking screenshots and putting in there going, wow, another booking, another booking, another booking. And so, you know what? Having a book is one of the most powerful tools that you can have out there in the marketplace, right? I mean, I'm, I I'm say it every day, man. I'm, it's, it's, I'm it's, preaching it's, to the <laughs> Yeah, I say it every day. You know that, man. <laughs> Holy smokes. A, a couple of years ago, I was in another book. And I used to, you know, this this lady, I saved her company. And then she said, hey, as a gift, I'd like to get you in my book. I'm like, all right, cool, done. And she put me in the book. She got me on the front cover and, you know, with some pretty awesome legends there. I won't, I won't drop the name on that one. But that book opened up so many amazing deals for us. Like mm. We're talking 50K, 100K deals just because of that one chapter in one book. If we use it as a lead magnet, it's... It's pretty epic, the power of the book, because, hey, guess what? We all give out business cards and things like that. But if somebody gives you a book, that book is hanging around. It's there. The spine is always staring at you. You know, it's you, you, you don't throw out books, right? It's you don't. To get rid of. And I don't know why that is. You know, if you think about it, I don't even remember taking a book and be like, eh, I'm going to throw this away. You just never do it. It becomes sort of a trophy. You become proud that you bought that book. You maybe you read it and you put it on the shelf and it becomes an item in your house. It's wild. In in fact, people use it to showcase their knowledge. And because if you can, if you can see, like usually I have a bookshelf in my background. I'm just switching up backgrounds. As soon as you see somebody else with with the bookshelf and you see the same books, instant rapport, instant, hey, we have read the same stuff. Yep. We are off the same mind. I, I need to skip, dude. Rich Dad, Poor Dad. That is the book that actually changed my brain. Bingo. Same here. That's why it's behind me. I pay homage to it because <laughs> it changed my life. I'm with you. Yep. Yep. Exactly. The power of a book, like a book, one idea. You know, if you if I speak to anybody, any entrepreneur about Rich Dad, Poor Dad, they're like, dude, that changed my life. I'm like, I know. All this time I thought I was, all this time I thought I had a business. Turns out I was self-employed. <laughs> because of the cash flow quadrant, right? And so it's all right, cool. Let's get from the S quadrant to the B quadrant to the I quadrant. It's you don't have to, you don't have to give history. It's all there. You actually understand the same formulas. So yeah, man, power of the book. Well, uh, let's start off with maybe the tip that you provide in that book. And the reason why I ask is because people come to me all the time and they say, you know what, I'm not ready to write a book. I'm not ready to start a podcast. 
However, I want all this influence and credibility. And I say it to these individuals, <laughs> it's all a breadcrumb, you know, that bre it's a, a set of breadcrumbs towards the big goal, right? You just have to keep yep. putting down the Legos and building as you go. So why are you doing it? Because if you have a book and you have a nice background and you have a nice video, a nice podcast, you become extremely attractive to the marketplace it seems like you show your commitment with more of a professional feel, which makes you an ideal person to have at their event, right? They look at you and they say, man, this person really takes their business seriously. Uh, I've seen them grow over time. I see how they look good on camera. They sound good, but they have a best-selling book tied to them. Most people don't. Let's get them to come to my event or have them on my podcast because I believe they're going to be a value add for my audience. And I think the moment you start thinking, how could I serve an individual who serves many people? That's when the light bulb goes on and you realize what you do will matter every day, no matter how slow or how poor it looks at this point. Growth and transformation will catch people's eyes for their audience. What do you say about that? Oh, what a hundred percent. And you know, the whole thing about, do I have the right setup? Do I have the look? Do I have, it is very important because you only get one chance to make a first impression. When you and I jumped on this call today, boom, the first thing I said was, dude, that is an epic background, <laughs> right? I was like, I got background envy. Yours looks epic. Now I need to go and upgrade mine. And I just haven't put the time into it, right? Yeah. But don't let anybody who's listening to that, don't let that stop you because we all started somewhere. Somebody had to start somewhere. We all started, we all had the same uh, starting line. And all you can do in this day and age, you've never had an opportunity like you do today. Reach out to people. I had a guy who got like some of the world's top people on his podcast. And it was just a white background with a mic. <laughs> and, I, and I messaged him I'm like, dude, how did you get that person on your podcast? And he's like, uh, I'll let you in on the secret gonna cost you 10 grand i'm like yeah man sure tell me how'd you do it he's like i asked <laughs> <laughs> it's all you gotta do right uh, i'm like holy moly because he used it as a tool to open up doors when you ask people to come and talk about their favorite subject who what's everybody's favorite subject themselves themselves right? yes they want they want to talk about themselves when you say hey let's let's mike Jump on my podcast. Let's spend some time together. I want you to share your message with my audience. Hell yeah, I'll jump on. But if it's, hey, Mike, jump on with me for a 15-minute call where I can pitch you. You're like, dude, I am not interested in that. <laughs> no. nobody, wants, nobody wants to be sold. So um, building, building the podcast, writing a book, it just makes life so much easier. It opens up so many different doors. And yeah, we, we can... We can I can talk to you about how, you know, how many different doors it's open, different strategies. What would you like to dive into? Well, I, I guess, um, you know, for the average person out there who's listening, they might just want one nugget from you. When it comes to this book, maybe you've been around some big players, but how can they make themselves more attractive other than just writing a book and creating a podcast? Is there a certain way of maybe dressing certain colors? Like look at the lighting in the background. I will tell you that when I just jumped on a call with you, I could see that you're a little bit more serious than the average person, which makes me, and this is psychological, take you a little bit more seriously. Whether it's right or wrong, I don't know, but I'm only going, as a human being, I'm only trying to put together what I have in front of me. And so if I see someone with a good camera, great microphone, good lighting, I would think that maybe they're a little bit more serious to deal with. So I treat you maybe a little bit differently, right? Where I'm, hey, I can't mess up. I know I got to be on, on, on time. I know this is only going to be 45 minutes. So in my mind, I'm thinking that that is the game I have to play. So do you, these people out there, whenever they're looking at you or learning from you or reading from your book, is there a clear takeaway on maybe something they can do right now that will start to elevate them in the eyes of the public? <clears throat> the easiest answer to that is help people. Now, be of service, of course. Be of service. We're we're here. We're all people. One, so no no one is beyond reproach because we're all people. We all have problems. You solve one problem. Guess what? There's ninety nine other problems to to solve. Right? Be of service. Be of value. Add add tons of value. Take take away problems from people. Don't be a problem. Oh, um, so now, <laughs> if you if you so I started 
my journey back in 2004. Jesus, when I think about it, that's 20 years ago. So I'm feeling a bit old right now. Um, all I did, like I, back then, um, you know, I, I, my first business was an eBay business. It's the equivalent of Amazon. And um, yeah, it's the equivalent of Amazon right now. So it's uh, basically we were just selling goods online and that's how the company grew. We built six other stores and that those, those businesses still run 20 years later. It's absolutely wow. insane. The power of leverage. And systems. If you build something and you know build it and it's there and these systems are out there pushing it all day, you don't even we've not done any marketing on those companies. They still just run all by themselves. From there, got into affiliate marketing, after affiliate marketing, got into CPA cost per acquisition, so lead generation for banks, etc. And then from there, I had the great idea to build my own digital agency. So here's the here's where the the, the tip is. When I, the reason I built a digital agency was back then. Now we're talking 2008. So some of you might probably not be born then, just joking. <laughs> but 2008, like we had websites came out and I used to be a scientist. And then going from a very, you know, from being a scientist to designing a website, right? I was like, wow, I can just be creative and design stuff. And all I wanted to do was design websites. And so I went to the other website designers all around here in Melbourne, Australia. And I said, hey, man, I love designing websites. You've got your company. Can you outsource your web design to me? I see that you've got 12 people on staff. Send it to me. I'll get it done quicker, faster, cheaper, better quality than what you can do. No offense. Give me a try. Here's one for free. And from that, one little reach out, I had 36 agencies that would send me work every day. It helped me build my staff to 100 people. Wow. So we had 100 staff, right? Um, going from going from a solopreneur to hiring a GM, a marketing person, and having proper structure, and then having a hundred stuff. By the way, it didn't happen overnight. That took five years, uh, but it was one of the best personal development lessons that you'll ever learn. Building, you know, teams. We can go into all that. Um, but having building joint ventures. My whole thing is about building joint ventures. I've grown all my businesses through joint ventures. 2012, we built a company which built apps for buildings and communities and that company we took to 20 million in four years and so this that and that that too was done through joint ventures then i started buying up companies i became an investor so buying up different companies putting them together uh, growing them scaling them and selling them and so that was the next next five or six years the company behind me, business authorities that we built um, while I was on this big, you know, um, road to success with my head up in the clouds. And actually, I was busting my ass working 18 hour days at that point in time. Unfortunately, two of my friends, they committed suicide. It's a very real thing in the business world. It, it's bad. It happens. They did that three months apart. And one of the guy's funerals, there was 500 people, one life, 500 people, right? Insane. But one that the reason why it impacted me so much is, and here's another lesson, if you're in business, one deal can change your life. One conversation can change the trajectory of where you're at. And so if I had been there to have those conversations, those people might still be around. But I said, never again will I let that happen. So I started calling up all my friends saying, how's business? What's, what's happening? What's going on in your life? They all had the same story. I can't grow my team. I'm stuck. I'm plateaued. I haven't, my business hasn't grown in five years. I'm at the same level. Hey, my, I'm relying on a couple of key contracts. Hey, my taxes are overdue. I'm so stressed. Like it, it was all the same, you know, after a while, after you talk to enough people, you realize that in business, people have the same sort of problems. And so I said, Hey, I'm going to run an event. I'm going to invite all these people down. By the way, at this point in time, zero credibility other than my the people who know me on Facebook, right? I said, hey, I'm gonna run an event. It's gonna be a thousand bucks. I had people calling me up going, who do you think you are? You can't charge a thousand dollars for an event. You're not Tony Robbins. I was like, hey, look, we're gonna, we're gonna teach you some of the most incredible, we're gonna teach you stuff that's taken us from zero to 20 million in four years. If that's not worth a thousand bucks, then geez. All right, cool, each to their own, right? Anyway, we sold out of that event in two weeks. 150 people showed up. From those 150 people, three years later, 3,000 people, 3,000 members. And that's just in my city. So it shows you what one little idea, one, you know, having an unstoppable mindset saying, hey, it doesn't matter. I'm going to achieve this, what that'll achieve. Now, that business 
every profit that we made, we put back into different causes. So it was a, it's, it's a way of giving back to the world. So that tiny little business, and I say tiny little business, 3,000 people over all those years is, is a very tiny business. We made more than a million impacts. I think it was 1.1 million impacts. What's an impact? One person's life is an impact. So we use a platform called B1G1. And it stands for buy one, give one. It doesn't mean I buy a TV, I give a TV. It's I bought something, for example, a ticket to my event. And, you know, Mike's Mike's bought a ticket. And because you bought a ticket, automatically you get an email saying, hey, Mike, thanks for buying a ticket. Thanks for showing up. And because you did that, we've planted an acre of rainforest without you knowing. Now, if I said to you, hey, Mike, come buy a ticket. And because you're buying a ticket, I'll plant a thing of rainforest. You're going to say, yeah, you're just you're just putting up the price, right? Yep. Up that amount. Or, hey, Mike, come and I'll donate, blah, blah, blah. You go, yeah, cool. But you've already just put that on the ticket price. We don't tell people where what's happening in the background. It happens after they make the purchase. Therefore, it's a really good good mm. will, good feeling thing, right? So back to let, let me just uh, talk about b1g1 for a second how it how it got incepted again great ideas great ideas can turn into amazing things mm -hmm. so masami sato and paul dunn they're the founders of this thing now paul dunn is he's 80 years old this year he is one of the most incredible dynamic speakers that anyone will ever meet he used to he's he flew down from singapore just to come to our event and he rocked the stage i've never seen a man at that age, rock the stage. He had everybody jumping out of their seats and it was just epic. Now, Masami, she's the, the founder of this. She, they were walking through a, um, a shopping center and she sees this guy walking out with this big giant LCD LED TV. And she goes, this man is going to spend time watching this beautiful TV. Wouldn't it be amazing if somebody in some part of the world got the gift of vision? So that's what B1G1 is. Oh. And that's how, it, that's how it all started. And her husband, Paul, being an entrepreneur, said, I can make that happen. And so they built this platform called B1G1. And now, together, they've created more than 200 million lives impacted. Just because they had that idea, they carried it out, they made it happen. So, dude, a, a person that I think you should definitely have on your, on your show is Paul Dunn. He will rock your world. Oh. He will add tons of value to your people. Uh, I'll make that introduction after this. So the point was one idea, one being an entrepreneur, you can literally change the world by having that vision. And so they had this vision now 200 million lives impacted because two people decided to, Hey, let's do something great. Let's make this happen. And then they empowered everybody else around them. And so now, even when you, when you book in a meeting with Paul, he says, Hey, thanks for booking in a meeting with me because you did that. A child in whichever country is going to get education for the rest of the year. Like, wow, how good does that feel, right? <laughs> it gives you such uh, an understanding of what's important to him, right? And to that company. But there's meaning in every action then. Oh, that's huge. There's a couple of things you said I want to really touch on. One idea can change everything, right? One idea, and whenever you take action on it, it does lead to momentum. Other people get on board, which... That does, uh, it, that does lead to one conversation, right? I've had conversations where I completely changed the trajectory of my business. Sitting down at dinner this time last year, I met a guy named Kevin Marin at a mastermind, and he gave me an idea, and I was never the same. I went home. I thought to myself, oh, my God, I can't believe I'm going to implement this. I'll never be the same ever again. It really did take off from there. But also the fact of the mastermind effect. Guys, if you're listening to what he's saying, there is a mastermind effect. You have to get around the right people for you to start to share these ideas, have these conversations. And if you are like-minded and you are going in the same direction to the same place, you'll figure out a way to help each other. And magic happens from that. And the other thing you did say about personal development, I do believe I share your sentiment entrepreneurship is a personal development journey disguised as a business journey. The more you understand yourself, the more you understand where you can add value to the world and you realize your flaws, your strengths, and you build around your strengths and you fix your, your weaknesses. I used to be a piss poor leader. Uh, and, and then you start to realize, man, we're not growing because my personal development is lacking. I need to focus on what I'm bad at for my team to grow. 
And it sounds like that's exactly what you did, man. <laughs> yeah, man, 100%. The people who you surround yourself with is so, so, so important. I'll give you an example. Just the other day, like it's it's January now, and we were, my team was like, cool, what are we going to, you know, how are we going to grow this year, et cetera? And I said, hey, I've just got a meeting. I'll come back. And I also believe that the timing of destiny is always perfect. Like the things that happen in your life cannot be planned better than they are. So I go to this meeting and I come back and I've come back from this meeting with this entrepreneur who's grown and sold his company at 600 million. <laughs> now that is bigger. That is bigger than the vision that we had and the plan of attack we were going through. And so after having that two hour meeting with this guy, all our plans have changed because we have a different pathway that we can now explore to achieve our goals quicker and faster. And it's proven by this other person who's done it. Not only once, I think he's done it four times now. And I went, well, team, I've just had this meeting. We wanted to go from A to D, but we can actually go from A to Z in the same amount of time. Which journey do you want to take? And the team just goes, let's go A to Z, bro. Let's go all the way. What are we? We're not here to play small. And so being around the right people is so, so important, especially people who've been there and done that. There's there's no better people to learn from than the people who have actually gone, done it, achieved it, and they've paved the pathway forward. You know, pioneers in industry. I, I, I used to be a pioneer. I wanted to be on the cutting edge of absolutely everything. They say pioneers end up with arrows in their back. Elon Musk, right? Let's talk about him. He's a pioneer yes. in the electric vehicle space. He fought through and pushed through and did all the stuff to you know, got ridiculed and all those things. And then he made a massive change in the world. But at the same time now, all the other companies, they said, dude, let him go do it. Let him market it. Let him spend all his money. Let him make it normal, commonplace for electric vehicles. And they have 50 years of technology and infrastructure behind them so that once it became commonplace, now they're just releasing they're releasing their own vehicles like there's no tomorrow. And, but they didn't have to be the pioneers. They didn't have to go through the hard work. They didn't have to pave the way. Elon Musk will go through, go down in history as the person who did that. But they're doing it. The other companies are doing it on a profit basis, right? They're looking for their shareholders. So the point is surround yourself with amazing people who've done, done what you want to do. Figure out what they did. Ask them questions. Again, people love talking about their success in in, um, in business authorities, actually, we have four different types of people. We have people who are starting out and that's the people doing zero to 500,000. We have people who are growing 500,000 to 5 million. We have people who are scaling 5 million to 50 million. And then we have the empire builders and they're 50 million plus. And those guys, the reason it was so easy to get these people around me was because they just wanted like-minded people to hang around with. Life is, as an entrepreneur, life is lonely. You are by yourself. Mm -hmm. You are fighting. You're fighting the fight all day, every day. You're at war. You're in, you're in battle. And then when you go and you achieve these things, and some of these guys in the group, these guys are buying yachts and supercars and helicopters and stuff, not to show off. They they don't even have profiles, right? They don't. Have, they they actually have anti-Google. They don't, they don't want to be found. They don't want to know. They don't want anybody to know about them. But they go and they buy the fancy cars, they buy the yachts and stuff as their personal achievements. And so when you can talk to them about that and relate to them, they're like, dude, I, I invited 200 of them to an event, to a, I said, hey, this is, this is, a, this is just a gathering of like-minded people. We're going to talk about innovation, disruption, and the industry and, and the economy. Would you like to come? These are the people on the guest list who I've invited. There's it's no pitching. It's just hanging around with like-minded people. Out of the 200 people, 85 showed up. I'm sitting in this restaurant. The whole restaurant's booked out just for me. And by the way, this is a city I've never been to. So I just said, hey, you are the people I want to hang around with. Because my business partner, he lives two and a half hours away from me, right? And so every six weeks, I'm over there. And we've been we've been doing this for three years now. And I'm like, dude, man, I need, other than the business, I need some friends over here. So I used our software and I said, hey, find me these sorts of people and blah, 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 blah. And I found me all these people. And next thing you know, I'm sitting down at dinner, 85 people in this restaurant. Oh. 
everyone's walking up to me because I'm the, the host, right? The instigator of this whole thing, walking up to me and thanking me for such an amazing event. The person on my left-hand side sold his company for $48 million. The person on my right-hand side does $560 million in revenue. These are not people who you just get to hang around with, you know, day to day, every day. And it was the same for them. They don't get to hang around with people at that level every day. So because the friendships, the bonds that were created at that dinner to this day, now that dinner was two years ago. To this day, I still get phone calls. When are we doing the next dinner? When are you coming up again? Dude, I got some deals for you. And deal flow increases because when you hang around with people at that level, People are just sending you deals, sending advice. Hey, actually, it's turned into a, hey, man, I'm having this issue. Have you done this before? Yeah, of course. I did that like 10 years ago. Man, you're a baby. All right, cool. Do this. And you just get to the solution really, really quickly. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. So it's it's yeah, not man. like you have to have all the answers. If you provide individuals a platform, right, and, and, and maybe a way for them to meet other high-performing individuals, like you said, us entrepreneurs, we're a weird bunch. We're personal development junkies. We're reading Jim Rohn while everybody else is watching football and soccer and, and, and baseball and all that. We are a different breed. And so if you can give us an outlet to meet other people and just talk about life at the same level, it's like you become a value add to them. And what you're doing there, it's, it's in the exact alignment of what you offered the individual when it comes to website development. Hey, let me just offer you something for free, right? <laughs> let me just prove myself to you. I have a very similar story and, and it really hit home. It's like, if you just want to, you just got to prove yourself to these people first. Let me just show you how much value I can add. And then, then maybe we'll talk about money down the road, right? But you led with value first, not just for the website development, but to these people. And that probably helped you stand above everyone else that was a taker rather than a giver. 100% man. I tell my kids, I go, Hey, did you produce and consume today? <laughs> did you, you know, they're on school holidays right now. Did you get, did you get smarter today? Did you get dumber today? And now that's the decision-making matrix. <laughs> so, um, an example, my, my son's having friends over, he will go and he will study and learn and research about something so that when his friends come over, he can talk to them, he can teach them, he can add value to them. And then when they come over, like the friends come over, they're like, oh my God, Max is so smart. He taught us how to do that. Da, 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 da. And then the parents come up to me. They're like, dude, man, how is your kid so smart? I'm like, well, I told him he had a choice of being dumber or being smarter and he chose smarter. And therefore he spent time learning something. And he only knows one hour of extra video that he watched, which he then used that to teach your kids. I go, it was just a difference of one hour. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> so he has this automatic program that you instill to them that, hey, let me be uh, interesting, right, to, to for people. Let me t learn something and then I, I need to regurgitate it out to individuals so their life is a little bit better. So it's not just about yeah. what's in it for me. It's like, what could I learn that could help someone else? And if you're yep. programming in your kid to have that in them now at this age, how old are they? Seven and six. It, it, it You take that, you... At 20 years, and you're at, this individual is an entrepreneur. It's so spectacular to see people go to an event, learn something, and then share it on a podcast. And then it is wild that the market will look at that individual and say, wow, that person is the one that gave me that information. That person changed my life. And it yeah. does give you this, this extra boost in your sales of like, wow, you know, the, the more I read, the more I personally develop, the more events I attend, the more – incredible co connections that I make, I will become more of a force in the marketplace. Therefore, I could actually impact people, right? Everybody wants authority. And I think that's pretty much what your book is about. Guest speaker success, boosting your authority. You don't want to be the person that speaks and nobody listens. So you need to teach in a way you need to attract the right tribe, but also give enough value that people will look forward to hearing what you have to say, what you've learned and who you're becoming. Oh, so good. <laughs> I've got I've got one bragging story that I want to talk about my kid. So my son and I, we have a ritual every Sunday. And Sunday is my son's day, right? That's his that's his thing. Sunday, dad, let's go. <laughs> and we go out and we go out to the local shopping center and we walk around and we get a juice and we just walk around and we talk. That's our that's our time to just 
deep deep brag about the week and just talk and improve. And so we're sitting down, we've just ordered our juice and he's sitting down and he's, his head's bobbing and he's counting. And I'm like, dude, what are you doing? And he goes, counting. I go, what are you counting? He goes, there's a hundred people here. I was like, yeah, all right, cool. I'll, I'll, I'll let you up, upscale it a bit, but sure, hundred people. And he goes, you give me $7 a week in pocket money. I go, yeah. He goes, you just paid $10 for my juice. I said, yeah. He goes, a hundred people paid $10 for the juice. I said, yeah. He goes, it takes them five minutes to give me my juice. I said, yeah. He goes, I made $7 in the week and they made $1,000 in five minutes. I was like, yeah. He goes, how do I make $1,000 in five minutes? I go, you add value to a hundred people. <laughs> and he's just like, okay, how are we going to do that? Now, I, this this leads on to another another quick little story. January last year, so January 2023. In Australia, January is the month where we don't do anything. January is like our, we, we chill out. The sun is shining. We just go to the beach. We work on our tans. That's what we do. So we're on the beach. We usually go with five or six families. It's a it's a ritual that we've created. And we're on the beach. Um, all the all our Ladies have said, hey, boys, we're going to, we're going to brunch. Good luck with the kids. See you later. We'll see you in four or five hours. So it's me and all the guys. We're sitting there, we're standing, walking on the beach with the kids. And then at this point, I get a text message from one of my cousins. And my cousin, who's with me, it's his, his sister. Um, we get a text message together. And we look at the text message. And the text message says, hey, can you please donate $50 to this charity? And it's her three-year-old has cancer. So really, really bad stuff. And so we call her up and, you know, it's like, Hey, what's going on? Like, we didn't know it was that, that bad. And so she said, look, you know, she's a doctor by the way. And so she said, I need two or $300,000 to, to, to fix my kid. We said, okay, cool. Let's, we'll make that happen. But the, we looked at our kids and we said, Hey, how can we add value to the marketplace where we can add to, you know, we can generate two or $300,000 without asking people for donations. What if we they willingly gave us money? What can we do? And they said, oh, board games. Because we all love playing board games, right? Mm -hmm. And so we go, they go, board games. Now, this is, there's a 14-year-old, a 12-year-old, a 7-year-old, a 6-year-old. Board games. Hey, my son, what do you want to build a board game on? He goes, ninjas. Because he loves ninjas. He's, they're doing ninja <laughs> training, right? So that, that's, that's what's happening over there. So ninjas, the 14-year-old the is like Olympic gods, all this kind of stuff. We go back home. We jump on ChatGPT. Help us build a board game. And then before you know it, four hours later, we actually have a board game. There are now 14 board games in production. A board game company was started that day. The board game launches on Kickstarter next week. It's been a year in production. There's 14 games that are coming out. Um, NinjasUnleashed.com is the first one that's coming out. Uh, we, we, we ran a little competition, by the way, remember, I, we don't ask for donations. We just tell people about the awesome stuff that we're creating and then they willingly jump in. And then after they jump in, we go, Hey, by the way, Mike, because you supported this, this is what's happened in the background. Yep. 26,000 people registered in the first week to be part of this thing. Like it's one idea and the, the whole company is built to give back to different charities. So we are building board games that each board game for the life of it, for the in perpetu perpetuality, will be able to give back to different causes forever. So that's, a, again, another little idea has turned into a business. Now the business has the 14-year-old, the 12-year-old, the seven-year-old, the six-year-old. They have a stake in this business. This is for their legacy. And now they're talking about, <clears throat> they tell their friends, we have a board game company. Can you imagine the trajectory of these children? Oh. who are building board on the weekends. They spend time building and creating and crafting new board games. The 14-year-old, the one day I went over to his house and he, his head was like this. His, for those of you who can't, who can't see me, hands in the head, you know, looking distraught. I said, what's wrong? He's like, I can't get this. I said, can't get what? He goes, chemistry. And he's looking at the periodic table. I was like, dude, that's so epic. He's like, what do you mean? I'm like, that looks like a board. Why don't you turn it into a game? 
a week later, he had a board game about chemistry and the elements. Right? <laughs> we have tools. We have tools. We have access to AI. We've never had tools like these before. So whoever's listening, it doesn't matter if you have that one idea. That one idea can turn into something big. It can impact so many, so many lives. Have the grit to stick it out. It's taken a year to launch this company. Have the grit to stick it out because the legacy that gets created from there will be so, so, so impactful. So yeah, man, that's that's my last little story there. Well, it, I mean, I have a phrase in my company. It's think like an entrepreneur. If you think like an entrepreneur, you can always see where there's chaos, there's opportunity. Where there's a problem, there's a solution. And you can be the hero of your own story. What you're talking about is this call to adventure, the hero's journey, right? You're in this world, you're comfortable, you're on the beach, but there's a call, you, there's a need to do something. And then you go into the world of the unknown. How do I create a freaking board game? You probably have <laughs> trials and tribulations, dragons to slay, all kinds of problems, self-doubt. And then once you obtain the reward, you now have to go back and share it with the many because the reward is not making the business a success. It's actually seeing individuals' eyes light up that they can do the exact same thing. And that is the completion of the hero's journey. And I commend you for that. But I do want to touch on your other company, CometSuite.com, which is all about AI and lead generation. Uh, I love those two phrases. So can you tell yeah. us a little <laughs> bit about Comet Suite, please? Yeah, man, for sure. Dude, so Comet Suite was incepted three years ago. In fact, check this out. This is how funny it is. Six years ago, this guy invited me to be on his podcast. We had such a great show for that one hour that every three months he would follow up with me saying, hey, man, can we be in business together? Hey, man, can we be in business together? Hey, man, can we be? And every three months, I'm like, nah, dude, I'm busy. Nah, dude, I'm, I'm, I'm doing something. No, I can't. No, I can't. I, and I'll never take on anything that I can't dedicate my mind to. So no, 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 no. And then, you know, I flew up to his, to his city uh, one day and I messaged him. I'm like, hey, man, I know it's five in the morning. But hey, do you want to catch catch up for breakfast? And he's like, I'll be there in 20 minutes. And so we catch up. We have breakfast. We're sitting down at breakfast. My, my family, they wake up at 8 o'clock. I'm up at 5. It's the, the, the best hours in the morning, right? Early hours. Anyway, I'm sitting down at breakfast with this guy. And I'm like, tell me about your business. Tell me about what you're doing. And he's like, oh, this, 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 this. And I was like, dude, your offers are wrong. Yeah. And I wrote it on a napkin. I was like, yeah, try this up, right? He comes back couple of weeks later, he's like, you have no idea how much money I made. He told me the number. I won't share it over here. But he did really, really well. He's like, can you be my business partner? I'm like, why? I told you exactly what to do. Just go do that. He said, no, no, no. I really want you to be my business. All right, cool. So I looked into it and I said, hey, you know what? I'm going to make you a deal. If this is April, I go, I'm going to go in all in on this. And you have in writing until December to kick me out of the company and you can keep 100% of everything. And he's like, Okay, but I, I want you to be my business partner. Why would I kick down? Like, it's okay. You've got it in writing. Here we are, three years later. We've got two and a half thousand GHL, uh, what do you call it? Uh, digital agencies who are using our systems. We plugged into another company called GHL. And then that's helping us grow. It's a CRM. It's an amazing CRM that's just growing like crazy. So, GHL, of course, go high do? level. You're talking about, right? That's right. Yeah, that's we, we right. use it. I love it. It's changed my life, of course. It, it's it's epic. We were at the conference just a couple of months ago in October, actually. Epic. Those guys are growing, innovating so well. Mm -hmm. So for most of our clients are GHL agencies. And so because we have two markets, we have agencies, digital agencies uh, who are using GHL. And the other one is sales professionals. Now, what does the what does the tool actually do? The tool, you can tell it. I'm looking for CEOs who are authors who like pink ponies it'll go it'll find them it'll start talking to them and it'll book them into your system you can tell it hey i'm looking for everyone who works at forbes.com i'm looking for everyone who works at the new york times i'm looking for everyone who works at this hospital the, the, the best example is this because we are a b2b tool it's a business to business tool if it's a if you're in business it'll work for you this is how you know every day i see the signups coming through and then a restaurant signs up. Restaurant's not a business, right? Not a B2B business, it's a B2C business. So I call up the guy, I'm like, hey man, 
we're, we're, we're a B2B tool. So I'm going to cancel your subscription and you know, you don't, you don't need to use it because I'm just trying to save you time. He said, no, no, no. I've seen all your YouTube videos. I think you guys are brilliant. I know exactly what the tool does. Can we please figure out a way to use it? Said, okay, cool. Sure. All right. If you've, if you've got context, why not? I go, where are you? He goes, I'm in the middle of the city. I go, wow, cool. All right. Can you look around? Tell me, what do you see? He's like, I see this building, this building, this building. I'm like, oh, wow. Can you go into the building and take a photo of the directory? He goes, yeah, sure. Goes in and takes a photo of the directory of the businesses that are in there. Comes back into our tool. Comes back to Comment Suite. Types in the names of the companies. He now has all the details of the people who work there. Presses one button and the email that goes out. And I'm going to use your name, for example. Hey, Mike, I know you work at a million dollar book. Did you know we're neighbors? We've just opened up. If you come down for dinner, I'm going to give you a free bottle of wine. If you come down for breakfast, I'm going to give you a free muffin with your coffee. And if you come down for lunch, I'm going to hook you up with 20% off. Would you like to come in? Here's a coupon. Now that has gone out to everyone in every one of those buildings. You don't, he didn't have to go and you know print out stuff and do, do all that sort of stuff. It's everyone who's working in each of those buildings. His restaurant was full. So that's, that's an example of a B2C. B2B, I get a call from this guy and he goes, dude, thank you so much. Your software is amazing. I've become the number one sales rep in Las Vegas. Go, okay, cool. What do you sell? He goes, I sell $80,000 machines to chiropractors. Okay. I go, so what'd you do? He goes, I found it. I went into the software. I found every chiropractor in Las Vegas. I sent them an email saying, hey, Mr. Chiropractor, I know you're absolutely busy. It's crazy time for you. But I've created a two-minute video, which is going to show you how this brand new machine, FDA approved, et cetera, et cetera, all the scientific studies can add a minimum of $100,000 to your bottom line. Two minutes is all I'm asking for. They click, they watch the video for two minutes. They see all the medical studies. They see all the doctors who put their energy into this. And then there's just a booking link. And now they're clicking, they're booking. He's able to reach out to his ideal audience. That's the key. The ideal audience. If you know your ideal audience, if you have a great offer, his audience was chiropractors. His offer is, hey, I guarantee you I'll add $100,000 by using this brand new technology, which other chiropractors don't have. So you will stand out. You'll be able to be an industry leader. But he's able to reach out to them en masse and then get them quick book and then he shows them what he needs to show them, they get signed up. So B2B, this tool is absolutely amazing. B2C, we have so many cool people who are using it in different ways. We call it stem cell technology because it can be absolutely anything. If you know who you want to reach out to, you'll be able to use Comet Suite to get, get, it, get in front of them. I got to check it out, man. I'm a GHL maniac. <laughs> I built my million dollar book agency off of that platform and uh i will never look back man so uh i gotta take a look at this comet suite that's c-o-m c-o-m-e-t suite s-u-i-t-e guys i recommend you look it up especially my clients um i like your style man i really appreciate you taking your time and giving us some of your insight here today uh and you're in australia i'm in the u.s someday somehow i bet we come come across uh paths and, and meet at an event but uh last question i have for you Outside of your sure. own book that you're a part of, is there one that stands out in your mind that you recommend our audience pick up today that maybe put you on this path or was a defining moment in your life? One book. I have literally like 10 sitting on my table right here. Let me, let me, let me pull out. Jim uh, Rohn, Kiyosaki, <laughs> Napoleon Hill. Give me some of the good uh, we, ones here, we, man. We, what do you think? Here, here's one. If you want to grow your company, there is no man smarter than... Mr. Bill Glazer, outrageous marketing. It'll Ooh, make you don't think know that at all. Out, outrageous advertising. You got to check it out. He is absolutely brilliant. He, you know, him and um, Dan Kennedy, they used to be partners. They created GKRC. When it comes to copywriting, when it comes to marketing, when it comes to getting your business out there, it's the most unique ways. And here's a beautiful thing. We all started from somewhere, right? Nobody had million dollar budgets when they started. I also had somewhere. This is the book that'll show you how to think and leverage in different ways to get it out there. And so if you read that book, again, Outrageous Advertising. He's also got another book called Outrageous Marketing, which has got like step-by-step, multi-step campaign strategies that you can run and you can get your product out there into the right people's hands and create a viral effect. So that's the one I recommend. Beautiful.
man. You gave us a lot of insight, man. Uh, you're talking about serving the many for service to the many leads to greatness. That sounds like it's your MO, which Jim Rohn preaches quite a bit in his books. And uh, that's why I think your message resonates because I, I believe in what you just said. So it's an honor, man. Thank you so much, guys. Pick up his book if you can. Guest speaker success. He has a chapter in it. He has all kinds of stuff online. You can find him pretty easily. And uh, yeah, we got to do this again, man. Mike, for sure. Hit me up anytime, bro. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you again. You got it. Remember, guys, a million dollar book will lead to a million dollar life. Right on.